thought it would turn to green or something. Oh no, we're not going to do the camera. The cameras can stay on the pup unless you want them on you. Um, hello? Is the phone. Hello, can you hear us? Good evening. Live from Ipswich, Mass. It's Christmas evening. And here at Service Dog Project, in the main ballroom, we have Lexi, Eileen, and Debbie, and Annie. And there's a few pups around. Bailey is resting comfortably under her green fluffy. And Dee Dee is in the back room while the sun porch. And then help me with the three pups that are in the kitchen. Kada, Digby, and Orville. And they have finally crashed a little bit. They were kind of zooming around inside and out. But Merry Christmas to all. There's no official mail call tonight, but Pam asked if I could entertain the troops. It won't be like the Bob Hope old Christmas specials, but we'll do what we can do. And we thought first we'd actually, I'm sure all of you have read this from the Daily Doggy a couple of days ago, but we felt it was worth reading out loud because it really it says, I think, what all of us feel. A Christmas thank you to every employee, worker, and volunteer at Service Dog Project, young and old. My being old, Lexi being young. We can't name names because there are so very many of you. No one more important than another. The dog sitters, pup teachers, kennel cleaners, bill payers, office organizers, groundskeepers, dog trainers, laundry doers, shot givers, volunteer coordinators, mail readers, and master overseer. Poop scoopers all, smiling, encouraging, teaching all with a common goal, united by love, to prepare these great dogs for their lives ahead with the people who need them. We did not even know that there were service dogs for people with stability and mobility issues. Our son John, 38, was experiencing the increasing symptoms of his myotonic dystrophy. He was becoming bent over, was down to two days a week of work, and slowly becoming discouraged and depressed. When someone suggested a service dog, we researched on the web which led us to visit on a Sunday open house at SDP. There were lots of people, big dogs, lots of food, big dogs, brightly painted buildings and tents, and big dogs. We truthfully didn't know what to think when we left, but two things stood out clearly. The facility was exceptionally clean, didn't even smell like a dog facility, and the people there were all smiling and obviously loved what they were doing. Fast forward to now. John has been given the gift of Jesse, a svelte and petite 122 pound beautiful Harl and sometimes drama queen. It has been five months now and to say it hasn't been without a lot of work and refocus in our household would not be true. But now John stands tall. His confidence has returned and even grown. He is mentally sharper and clearer than he has been in years. Everywhere John and Jess go, people stop them and want to talk. He has had to stop working completely now but has a reason to get up in the morning and has hope for the future. He has just returned to volunteer at an adult daycare with Jesse, where he had volunteered previously and looks forward to more time visiting nursing homes and schools with his new best friend. None of this would be possible without all of you, each one. You encouraged us with the paperwork. You encouraged us with the bonding process. You taught us about the care and loving of Danes and you even let us become poop scoopers and kennel cleaners so we would begin to give forward. You helped us with all the little, and sometimes not so little, bumps in the road. You made time in your schedules for training, visits, and much, much more. All with smiles, love, laughing, and encouragement. 
So much giving, so much caring, so much love, so much sacrifice. It reminds us this Christmas season of the loving, giving, caring, and especially sacrifice that God gave us in the gift of his son Jesus, whose birth we now celebrate. We are taught that God's ways are not our ways. We don't understand the tough times, and sometimes we have trouble accepting the good times. But we want to encourage all of you at SDP to keep moving ahead through the difficult all the while taking time to enjoy the experience, the good around you. What you do is changing lives. We are only one saw a small story of many. There are many more Taylor families out there who you may not even yet know about Service Project, Project, but whose lives will be changed and who will be touched in very real ways by each of you and the work, sacrifice, and love you put forth every day. We look forward to continuing relationship with all of you as we work to give forward in some many small way for future recipients of the greatest service dogs anywhere. Great Danes from SDP. Thank you all from the Taylor family. Christmas 2015. And I know I was at work reading that and I was like, <laughs> I was crying. And I think that's so true for all of us, whether we have a service dog or not. I think that's what we feel and that's why we keep coming back and that's why we pick up the poop. And that's why it's these, we know these dogs as service dogs are changing lives, but I know as service dogs in training and little puppies, they're changing my life. Mm -hmm. they having an impact on me. Well, and I think they change a lot of the CP's lives, too. The, the people that can't get out as much, they have they have this wonderful place to focus on and, and love these animals as though they're their own, mm -hmm. you know? Can everyone hear, Debbie? Mm -hmm. No, we're gonna go with that, they can hear you. <laughs> well, it's 45 seconds until yeah. that comes around, yeah. so. But it is, it definitely, I know, has changed my life over the past, I've been volunteering a little over three years now, and when I came here that Santa Sunday, and I was like, I'm going to come, drop off a gift card, do a <laughs> little thing, I live a long way away, I've got a bunch of other volunteer projects, and they suck you right in. <laughs> the dogs, the people. The the first time I met a recipient, I was like, I'll pick up poop for the rest of my life if it's going to get another dog out there. And I think that's why we're all here Christmas Day, because we wanted to keep going, and we're trying to get Grace to take five minutes to rest. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, I um, Richard of Washington Dryer, Richard Fame, when he was here last month, he was my sous chef in the chop shop one morning, oh. and um, we actually talked a lot about volunteering and, and, and such, and I had brought up Junior Achievement, because that's one of my favorite volunteer items, and he actually ran the New Jersey Junior Achievement or something, you know, um, so we actually talked a lot about that, and then Steve came, and we talked about volunteerism and, and such, and there are some organizations out there that they're so overwhelmed that they can't even get volunteers in because, like Steve and I were talking about, you know, we've applied at places and they don't get back to you or say, oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll but they just can't quite coordinate um, things. And I know when I started volunteering here, I was like, well, I can't give a real schedule because of work and such. And Carlene said, if you know what to do, just, you know, so I'd come after work or come on Saturdays and I'd pick up poop and I can do dishes and things like that. And I've graduated to other things, but it was very much... Ooh. And now joining us is a riot. A riot, do you have anything you want to say to your fans? <laughs> but what I think she wants to say I don't think it I think it initially caught Richard off guard, but then he was he smiled is because I said I've always said this to my friends, like, Well who was the last new friend you met? And they're like, Oh, my first Q and I'm like, No, it doesn't count at work because you go to lunch on Fridays, that doesn't count. Well, at the no, a gym friend doesn't count. Like, who is someone that you could count on if you needed something? Or, and the re and reciprocal, that you would want them to feel comfortable to call you if you needed that. And they ca I keep coming back to Service Dog Project, because there are people here, both CPs and people that I see live, um, that are real friends to me, that I know I could call in, a, in dire straits, and I feel they can call me, and... Um, I've heard that from CPs who have come to dog fest, their roommates, you know, first dog fest. Right. You know, they're now visiting each other and staying in regular contact. It's not just, you know, the little email. It's you, you do feel a connection, and there's something about this place 
that I think brings that out in people. And I think it's because it's, you know, no drama. I mean, how much drama can there be? You're all smell like poop and you're probably soaked from washing dishes and laundry and such. I mean, it's, it's real bare bones in the dirt, in the streets, and you have to depend on each other. So it's going to be a deeper relationship than, you know, other, other type things. And that's that magic of Service Dog Project. So this being the spirit, the season of miracles and such, um, I know we're living one right here. Uh, but I want to tell you about the Buddy Jr. adventure. Um, a couple weeks ago, so the night in Bethlehem, Manchester by the Sea, which is our community a few towns away, again invited us back, and um, Carly had said, take Buddy Jr. and put him in the back of the truck. So Bud was available because I don't do trucks. And... Um, Grace, of course, had already loaded up the truck before I got here, and Bud was like, would you have double of everything? Because then I brought all the hay and the buckets and things in. Um, but getting Buddy Jr. into the back of the truck, well, he's grown. He's not the little Buddy Jr. that Grace picked up and brought in for mail call a couple months ago. He's probably 150, 175, and the truck is, you know, high. It's not like getting into a trailer where you're just walking up a little ramp. So, um... He wasn't really happy with that. So, Grace just got him from one side. I'm on the other side of the truck with a frying pan full of apples, trying to coax him in. Then Steve got in the truck, the back seat of the truck, and is trying to pull him in. Bud's pushing. Grace is picking up. I don't know how he ever got in there, but he finally did. And off we go. And... He's, you know, looking out the window, so there's going to be some, there's definitely a lot of uh, donkey kisses on the windows, on the windows, and we're driving, and we're driving some, some pretty nice towns, and you'd see cars pull up to us, you know, and you'd think, oh yeah, there's a couple driving, and they got a dog in the back, whoa, that's not a dog, you can see them like their faces, so we kind of had some fun with that, when we pulled into the church, this family pulled in next to us, and all of a sudden, all five of them saw it, that it wasn't a dog in the back seat. And the smiles on their faces were, was hysterical. So then we need to get Buddy out. And he actually jumped out. He also had been a good donkey, and he had pooped in the frying pan. Um, so he's sort of running through the church parking lot, and we've got him on, you know, a, a figure eight. And uh, then he, of course, stops. And then we got to, you know, kind of push him and pull on him. And we finally get him into this. We're in a different area. Um, and the, the pen is now in front of the church, right on a road. So we were a little nervous because it's like, well, he knows cars in the parking lot here, but it'll be different with, you know, cruising by. But he was doing fine. And we had all of our supplies, hay and grain and fluffies and a pitchfork and a bucket. And all. So we were ready. Well, the two pygmy goats from last year came again. And as Carlene would say, they're fat. We definitely got fat from last year. Now, they just get dropped off. And a couple teens are, who dressed as shepherds are supposed to basically watch them. So they come in, and Buddy wasn't quite sure what to do with them. And one of them even tried to butthead him. And, uh... Buddy jumped back, and Bud and I kind of like almost stumbled because he isn't, even though he's a mini, he's a donkey, and he's strong. So what we heard from that, we tried to keep them separated just because they kind of scared Buddy a little bit. Now last year, the goats escaped, and because no one was watching them, I was chasing them, which, just picture that, and yelling, because I saw some teenagers at the other end. And I'm like, block those goats, block those goats. And these two guys did. So a couple, we had some couple near escapes, but they didn't. No, they, one of them just decided to eat the wood of this makeshift pen and tried to escape that way. So I'm screaming for help because I'm trying to pull him out because his head's now stuck in the fence. So I'm yelling. Bud's trying to keep a hold of Buddy Jr. Finally, the person that I know um, comes and she's pushing the head in and I'm pulling out and um, I think it was Lucy um, finally get you know her back in um, Buddy was so good everyone loved him 
a lot of people knew about Silver Star Project from Mary's time here. Met people remembered Buddy from last year. Um, some people knew because of Bellum and George. Um, I did meet a guy who, he was a military dog handler in Vietnam, which I had never met someone before. And he had read the book War Dogs, which if you haven't read, is a very good book, but you might want to cry a few times during it. Um, particularly when they talked in like World War One and World War Two, where families would donate their dogs to become military dogs. And I can't imagine myself saying to my Scooter Bell, no I'm going to have you be a military dog. Like, it wouldn't happen. And I love my country, but it wouldn't happen. <laughs> wouldn't happen. Um, so it was really a very successful night. Um, Mary and Joseph weren't texting all night like they were last year, so I was happy about that. Um, and Buddy Jr. did do some ca Christmas carol singing because there were kids singing, and then all of a sudden he's... <coughs> but he was very, very cute. And we had told Grace and Steve you know, we might have to call you if we can't get him back in the truck. So, um, we're, we take him back, get him back to the truck, and he's running through the parking lot. We're doing well. And of course, then he stops and wants to go the other way, so Bud had to kind of redirect him. And then we get to the, the truck, and yeah, he's not having any of it. And, um, so we're like, maybe we should go, well, like, we didn't want to get someone from the, you know, from the event, because it's like, we don't want it, uh, a civilian getting hurt, <laughs> a little donkey. So I called Grace, and I'm like, yeah, we need you. Um, two seconds later, this big guy comes up and says, you need some help getting your donkey in the truck? It was, again, Christmas miracles. And he basically picked up Buddy and put him in. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you just saved our lives. Um, so I called Grace, no need to come, um, which was good because they were eating, I think, rum cake that night, so I yeah. didn't disturb them. <laughs> um, and Buddy was, is very good in the truck. He likes to put his head actually in between Bud and I, so he's like, he likes snuggling. So, um, he was very cute, and, um, when we got here, um, he just jumped out of the truck. So he likes to get out of the truck, and I think with some practice... With some, and now our special guest. No. <laughs> <laughs> well. Do you have anything to say to your adoring fans? Uh, no, horses, donkeys, and chickens are done. Oh, oh my! my. <laughs> <laughs> did you, Pam? Did you see the person that wanted for Christmas? Wanted your lap as a ringtone? No, I didn't. No, you oh. missed that one. Oh, well, that could be a fun <laughs> way for <laughs> SDP. She there, didn't get what she wanted for Christmas. Is there an app? <laughs> is there an app for is that? There an app for that? It scares people. There is. Though. There is actually. Yeah, yeah let's you um, record something, and that's how I have. Yeah. I have a bunch on my phone, but. Yeah, I, maybe, I well that's, that. that's how we'll make some money. We'll have oh. Pam do uh, <laughs> her laugh as ringtones, and uh. we could have Carlene do, uh, or actually Earlene with her accent do your voicemail. Uh, a real Boston thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She so, has a real big Boston thing. <laughs> so, Buddy Jr. was a huge success. I think he'll probably be invited back next year. Um, we do need to practice getting... Actually, we, we talked with that he's probably better in a trailer just because it's... A, the slow business big, getting into it, and he might have a little more um, because... It's hard to get him in a back seat, but it was fun to drive around with a donkey in a back seat. <laughs> um, you know, and have people look at you and such. But, um, Debbie, did you want to kind of talk about your past couple days? Well, you're only 24 hours here. and My, my 24 hours? Well... She's still walking and talking, so that's <laughs> a good thing. <laughs> Check back with us in another week. Yeah, I, I think I'm probably going to sleep pretty well tonight. But you had 10,000 steps by 2 o'clock? Yeah, I made my 10,000 steps by somewhere between 1.30 and 2. So not a bad thing because an extra, if I, if I walked out of here losing a couple of pounds after being here for nine days, I'd be actually really happy. If I don't, I won't be unhappy either. But um, yeah, this was a, a great place for me to be today because I could be happy with lots of dogs mm -hmm. and lots of people that were great people to be around. So. Um, I'm going to enjoy today, and I'm 
pretty sure I'm going to enjoy the next, I guess it's eight days from now. Eight days, mm -hmm. yeah. Eight days a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, um, my dogs are going to be crazy with when I come home smelling of multiple, multiple, multiple great things. Mm -hmm. But uh, they'll deal with it. Especially puppies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. See, my dogs get worked up over the puppies. Really? Yeah, they just, you know. And then when, after I shower, they all have to come over, <laughs> smell me. I'm like, yes, I have clean clothes on. And mark you. Yeah. <laughs> well, my little one who's staying with a friend, he's actually the worst. So maybe I can get my clothes washed and clean because I won't pick, pick him up till Sunday because I don't get home till. And you can do laundry anytime. Here. Yeah, I didn't bring enough clothes to jeans wise to last the whole week, so I definitely. And with some fluffies or whatever when I need them. Yeah, I talked to Regina. Got the scoop on. <laughs> How hey, Regina, work. I gotta say, that's the funniest thing that you paid for dinner the other night. That yeah, was Carly hysterical. wants to know how you managed to figure out which restaurant it was. That was, again, the magic of SDP. <laughs> Things happen. <laughs> yeah, Carlene was like, she said to me, she goes, I don't know how she did that because we would only ordered from that place maybe twice. And, the um, Commodores? Yeah. Is that where it was? Yeah. Well, as Carlene said once, she said it 200 times. She loved that meal we got from there the other night. <laughs> 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 so it's a good place to order from. Yeah. A happy Carlene <laughs> makes a happy place. <laughs> and, you know, the, I, I spend probably almost two hour, four hours a day in my car, so I tend to do a lot of thinking, which is why sometimes I miss my exit and I start to come here instead of going to work. <laughs> um, which, you know, is problematic, so I need to stop that. But I was thinking about, and today we, we're actually just looking at this beautiful picture of Jonah with his family, a Christmas card, and we all went, oh, Jonah! Um, but I was thinking about all the individuals and families that take in these, you know, perfect pets, fabulous failures, failures, those who don't graduate from service dog school, and I don't think I've ever thanked them enough because... You know, they are taking someone who may have, you know, vision, hearing issues, or a little quirk that means they can't be a service dog. So, in some of the cases, you know, th these families have opened their hearts and homes to these dogs and are giving them lovely lives and, in some cases, becoming their service human. Um, and you think of Sandy, who, who is, you know, takes in all the retired dogs and such that, you know, thank you all. I mean, yeah. that's a lot that you're doing and... We greatly appreciate it. So, but yeah, Jonah looks happy. I'll try and get this up closer to the thing later on. Um, and his red bandana with his family, and it's just adorable. And Jonah, I'm the the one sitting here. I'm thinking, I would. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're too tall. <laughs> All right, where is the camera? So, in between our general talks, we'll oh, we'll read a few a few cards in yeah. case you miss them during mail calls. Um, so I want an update on the sick, sick puppies. I think everything's the same. I don't think anything's better or worse, but I don't know. Great, uh, still getting fluids. Mm -hmm. They're all. I think they're, they're all getting fluids. Grace is out there now with them. Yeah, Grace has to do them last so that she doesn't bring any of the contamination to anybody else. So if she comes in with an update, we'll, somebody here will, or Carlene will post one for you when we know. And I will tell you, Dee Dee is a fast dog. <laughs> <laughs> and leaps tall buildings in a single bound. Um, nice, nice dog. Um, but yeah, fast, 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 fast. Hi, Carlene. I hope you enjoyed my Confessions of an SDP Addict. I think we're all on the seven-step program. <laughs> I was so excited to see that my reference to SDP as my happy place made the DD that I decided it was worth a dollar up. Um, and I'll tell you, a lot of these cards here, it's dollar up, dollar up, dollar up, dollar up. So um, thank you very much because all those dollars do add up. And we greatly appreciate it. I know I've had to throw in a few bucks in the, the jug. Uh, Carlene and all members of Service Dog Project. 
Thank you for giving me a place to go and be happy watching all the fun at Crazy Acres. When I lost my fur baby this year, I wasn't sure how I would get through it, but every day I turned into your mail call, and watching all these beautiful puppies has helped with the loss. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. And I think a lot. I think a lot of us. Yeah, this. Mm -hmm. I know at work when I'm ready to put my head against my desk, it's like, can I sneak in a quick puppy fix and get me through the next few hours? Carlene, please find the enclosed check for the fun fund. After I visited in November, I set, I set up at two more crafts shows and did very well. I'm sharing a portion of my sales with SDP. I know it will be put to good use. Believe me, every dollar is put to good use here. Merry Christmas to all. Hope you are having, will have a wonderful holiday season. Carlene, I know you'd prefer cash to gifts, but I can't help myself. I love to shop for someone else. In this case, you. If it helps, almost all of the clothing came from Walmart, and perhaps you can return for cash or paint or fence posts or something, or pass the clothes around to the staff and volunteers. As per one of your recent doggy dailies, I bought various sizes so you can layer in the cold weather. Anyway, I hope something catches your eye favorably. I'll tell you. Oh, sorry. Another page. A happy, healthy, fun year end and year to come. Best wishes and blessings to all and love to you and all the four legsters. I can't begin to tell you how much I admire you and your operation. You're my model. She after whom I wish I could mold myself. Is that a grammatically correct, understandable sentence? Yes, it is. And it comes from the heart. And I'll tell you, many of you have sent over gloves and hats and sweaters over the years and uh, every one of them are worn mm -hmm. um, and are thankful and I, I know I have a purple pullover sweater that someone sent in and I'll tell you I think I have three knit hats because dogs are always pulling them off so I lose them and I just go to the <laughs> bin out here and someone every year makes all these hats and things and then spring comes and oh there's my yellow hat um, so so thank you for those. Let's see, what do we have here? Carlene and everyone, just a little note to say I am dollaring up for the fifth five times I watched Bella and George get their well-deserved service dog award. We were still, we're still talking about that on George in the video when you think of all those people that were there and the noise and I love that Carlene said well the elementary school kids probably <laughs> trained them on that having all this noise uh, but the point where they had just finished showing the video of, of Bella and her mom and, and they say George and he just very slowly turns his head like on command to the camera um, and then at the end Bella doing the wave and yes I'm waving um, like at the end of a baseball game when everyone's leaving and they're like, yeah, we just won the World Series and waving and just the confidence in her um, in doing that. And I will tell you, and we all say there's, every story is a, you know, Bella and George story, but you know, <coughs> Bella is the one that we're seeing is, I saw Tuca a few weeks ago, formerly Agatha. Agatha. Tuca's, well, first, there was this SUV coming down the driveway with a sunroof, and there's a dog with its head out of it. Oh, so I'll be honest, that was, I just thought that was the funniest thing. And I'm all like, who's that dog? Because it was just like, you know, it's a happy dog. And it was Tuca, his human I hadn't seen in months. He was so happy and confident and ran to Carlene to give her a, a kiss and to thank her. And he, I think, spoke to every person that walked by. Because everyone was saying, hi, hi, Tuka. And he would say, you know, my name is, da 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 da. You know, we're celebrities. Because he was talking <laughs> about the articles from the uh -huh. papers on the western part of the state and the news stations out there. And his, the woman he was with, who I think might be part of the home Her names, and Anna, she could not stop talking about the changes in him. And he just stood tall and proud and happy. And what I really liked was um, Tanner was talking to him, and he was—they were talking about. He was like, "Oh, you know, you know, my dog service dog has the same vest." Da da da. 
and and Brian said, could you talk a little slower for me? Because I want to talk with you, but you know I have my brain injury. Can you just? I want to talk. You know, and I was like, he probably couldn't have said that to someone. You know, months ago, he mm -hmm. probably just would have you know pretended he knew what everything was going on, and um, he just. It was so lovely talking to him and having watching him talk to everyone, and I know Tuka's a major part of that, mm -hmm. and that just again I'm like I'll keep picking up poop. Yeah, <laughs> you know this is what it's gonna do. And that day, uh, that was a f that Santa day was a fun day. It was a busy day. Busy day, and um, I hadn't seen Hunter since the winter, when his father came down and shoveled the roofs here. And uh, Hunter and his sister came, and Wendy, and they actually were babysitting Wanda in the house. Because <laughs> <laughs> Wanda was going crazy, and we had to keep him, it was like, so they took care of him. Um, and, you know, that Hunter smile, which is just, you know. He's still like, right there. Yeah, and um, to see them, you know, running around together and whatnot, but, uh, Yes, I'm sure Andy is thrilled with the weather because he did a lot of work last year <laughs> clearing the roads. Um, and back to the cards, unless anyone has something to say? Not at the moment. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see, what do we have here? Enclosed is my dollar for dollar up and a check to pay it forward for a hundred people who may not have the means to dollar up. Thanks for all you, your staff, the volunteers, and your charged dogs do for those in need. So one, again, I think that's what we keep seeing is people paying it forward, whether the swear bear or someone's dollar up, or I, again, just my, in my own little theory world, is since the cameras have gone live, the number of people who support us with poop pickers and such and everything is is greatly appreciated and those who can volunteer i think they're volunteering you know near their area mm -hmm. because they can't come here and volunteer but you know that volunteerism that heartness um they want to experience live so i think explore sdp has promoted more volunteerism hours in the world mm -hmm. I and I just think, and I think of, you know, people who are w volunteering now, whether it be service dogs or anything, you know, other animal rescues and such, I think service dog project was a push to that. Mm -hmm. And we see that with even students who come here for their, their school hours, but they keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Lexi? <laughs> just stuck with me for that. <laughs> that um, because it does, it's one, they enjoy it, but also it does make you just a richer person. And um, I know we all greatly enjoy, um, I call them the youth. <laughs> um, so I feel bad calling them the kids. Um, but to see them, can I keep coming back? You know, I just think that's wonderful. Yeah. Lexi's graduating this year. Yeah, in June, and then I'm heading to New Maine. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Um, how are we going to do like zoo zoology? you got to learn how to pronounce it correctly. Zoology. Zoology. <laughs> zoology. <laughs> That's what I have a BS in zoology. Oh, but uh, I ain't more for lab work, but I always laugh at people when they say zoology and I'll say, could you spell that for me? And they'll spell it correctly. And I'm like, hmm. If you actually spell it the way you're pronouncing it, there should be three of them. <laughs> So you this never stop true. learning here. <laughs> this is true. But it technically has one of those loud things yeah. too, but you know, being English here, we never have that mm -hmm. when you have ever see it. No, what made you choose that? Um, I've always wanted to work with animals. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm gonna stay with it, but I'm just gonna like yep. stop with it. Nice. Yeah. I don't know. But that's cool. I I never wanted to be a dog. I don't know why. I always thought I'd like have to put down a dog. Well an yeah. animal I could never yeah. do yeah. that. Yeah, vets are probably some of my favorite people. I, I've always loved all the vets I've had. And it boggles my mind how they know so much. Um, I just think they're cool people. And I, and there's a, been a real increase in women going into it. Right. Um, but I have 
to get in vet school than it is in medical school because there's fewer yeah, of them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's it. They're smarter than anyone. And there was a great series a few years ago. Um, it was on British, a British veterinary school. Um, and any British show out in the country is, is cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but this past year, Cornell Veterinary School did a six-part series on National Geographic. Mm -hmm. And um, they followed some seniors and some first years. And it was very interesting because I actually learned a lot about horses because of their major equine hospital there. Um, it was just sort of interesting to see that, all that. But it was very interesting because I think vets have to be cool people because you really get into a lot. So Debbie is our CDC uh, person that Carlene referenced in the, <laughs> in the DD. We do have quite that. That would actually be a fun survey. It's really like what does everyone sort of do? Because um, we have a little bit of everything. Carlene at one time had wanted to get a list of our uh, of everyone's occupations so she could figure out which were the wackiest or something. <laughs> and I, at one yeah. point I think I had sent out a note about that, but that was a while ago. But yeah, she's I curious as to all the kinds of occupations everybody has now yeah. or has had or and you know and that's what I think is really special about the the youth the students that come here because they're really being exposed to so many different types of people which I think a normal 16, 17 year old you know 10 year old as some of them have started um, meeting you know business owners military uh, retirees you know trade workers um, teachers nurses um, every type, you know, every walk of life. And then when they are meeting, you know, the recipients and such, you know, they could have, you know, severe health, emotional issues, which again, no sophomores in high school, I don't think, aren't right. right now. Um, and you're learning real life skills here, because it's common sense what you have to learn here. Um, so today, I really think I, some, for the most part, I have common sense. Not always good farm sense, but I think I do pretty good, except today when I was out on Donkey Hill with my full wheelbarrow of poop <laughs> and had to move a swing set because of the rivets and all the different balancing. And I'm like, okay, this didn't really work out as easily as I'd like, but I got through it and I got sunk it up. Well, one of the things that always impressed me before I even met anybody here was the impression I got that the kids or the youth, as you want to call them, everybody is treated well here and not as though they're less than because they're younger. You know, that's one of the things that I've always impressed with, you know, Carlene being her age and hanging out with the young kids and everybody gets along and everybody communicates well. And in a lot of places you don't see that because you have the differences yeah. of, well, they're too young, they don't know, or they can't do it, or whatever. And that was impressed me that there seemed to be a really good mix of everybody communicating and working well together. And I know, I when I first started, I learned so much from the kids. I was just going to say, know, my, the Laura yeah. and the Devin and the Connor. Juliana. Um, it's, you know, Juliana was actually my mentor. I spent most a lot more time yeah. with Juliana than the others. And I mean, first it started was puppy escapes and I'd yell to the kids because they were faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was like, okay, how do I mix the gruel and how do I do this? And, you know, and they, I really like, you know, followed them around. And again, what I love, and I, I sort of call it like mentorship type things, but on, because I usually come on the weekends with like Skip and Bud, and when I see them with um, the boys, you know, fixing fences and things like that, or, you know, changing the tires on the golf cart, or putting up, you know, flooring or ceilings, or, you know, the doggy door things. Again, I don't think most kids these days are, you know, using power tools and hammers and nails and things. And to see, you know, Skip and Bud really explain to them, you know, what they're doing and how to measure. Um, and I, I, I call it a mentorship, and I just think it's wonderful that, again, they're having these 
men and women in their lives that they probably would have if they weren't here and are really learning from them and we're learning from them. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I very much feel that. And um, as Carlin has always said, and, oh, and here. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I said, I'll move, I'll move, it. I'll be. Here we're live. The, the camera's anyway. the camera's on the pups, but here. Oh, okay. But we're um just kind of talking, yeah. reading some cards, and then we talk. I see. And okay. We were just talking about the, the wonderful. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that earlier when I sat down. I was like, oh, this oh, could be problematic. Brother. Okay. Hi, Bailey. <laughs> you want to say? Yeah. Oh. You want to yeah? No, you're you're part of the show, are you? Um, <laughs> but we were just talking about how with, with the youth, the mentorship of like Bud and Skip, when I see them helping, teaching the boys and girls how to fix fences and things, and how we learn from the kids, um, that there's a, a mutual respect between oh, yeah. all ages here, and you learn from where you can learn. And it, right. There's no... And the little child, she'll teach us sometimes. Yes. Is that what that, isn't that something? I don't know, but they, around here, when I first started, I was saying, the kids taught me. Yeah. Because that's who I was, you know, yeah. around most. Oh, yeah, Laura was like, Laura, Laura, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, what do I do here? What do I do, do here? And, you know, she'd give me even pointers on do this first and da-da-da-da, you know, when I was trying to help with mm -hmm. um, preparing the meals and things like that. She'd have the shortcuts mm -hmm. and such. So... All right, another Christmas card. Put on my glasses. Dear Carlene, thank you so much for all you and your staff do. Watching you can see the care and respect shown to each animal. Your mission is a noble one. I watch the progress of Bella and George with amazement. What a great pair. I also think about the rest of the lives you have helped. I met a Dane last week. It was the first Dane I had ever met. She was a wonderful animal. I told her owner about SCP and asked that they tell others. I know I, we have probably, because I actually give thank you gifts. I don't give Christmas gifts. Um, and I time my thank you gifts around the time the calendars come out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. So I, so I have had people who have since come and donated and given me money to put in the fun fund. But if you walk through our building, a lot of calendars hanging up. <laughs> and anyone who comes into my cube, I'll be honest, they notice it and ask about it and I'm happy to talk about it. And here, and have a poker trip while you're at it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's what a lot of people, not just, you know, the CPs and such. Everyone just wants to talk about it. And Carlene's nodding. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> She had a nice nap after supper tonight. Oh, yeah. We had a, a, a wonderful dinner of ham and fried bread and potatoes and corn and bread pudding. Dear Carlene, with all the hate and evil in the world today, it is such a pleasure to tune in to the SDP world, see good being done by thoughtful people and beautiful things. Please use the enclosed money for one chicken brick, extra postage, and for the dollar up views for Bella and George. <laughs> it is, that dollar up. Yeah. Uh, it all adds up. It certainly does. With this, with this problem with, with Neil, and, you know, it's the first time I've been at the vet, so I just said, go ahead, spend it. You know, we didn't, we didn't cut any corners because of money, which I've done for the rest of my life. Um, but I knew that I had that fun fun behind me. And, uh, and actually, since then, an awful lot of people have sent money directly to George. Nice, um, thank you. Which is wonderful. I don't know whether they get their deduction for it, which is something they should keep. We'll have to keep track of. I can mm -hmm. I can get anybody wanting any IRS info from us. I will get the stuff from George. I did talk to the manager the other day. She said, you know, the money was coming in. Unbelievable. Well, unbelievable. Well, the most unbelievable was the dinner the other night. That was incredible. <laughs> he talked about that earlier. I think that's going to be one of the funniest things that, aye, aye. that goes down. That, that's, that's, that, that's one funny thing. That certainly is true. The fact that I can call up and order dinner and have somebody 
in Georgia pay for it. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just, you know, I, you know, that was. The other one was around dinner, was trying to find the menu, the Chinese menu, and we couldn't find it. And somebody called from New York and said, it's in your center drawer. And it was. <laughs> and it was. Those are two, two that justify description. <laughs>
Texas, yeah. I know. Yeah. What has been the biggest surprise? To who? To you. To me. During this, you know, explore time. The numbers of people. The numbers of people that are entertained by just the sort of free rolling society that we are. I mean, the bunch of us around here, we just, we're just working, really. Yeah, it's just another day. A lot of problems, <laughs> interesting things happen. Not all positive, I mean, it's, you know, we get problems, we solve them, we go on. You don't script this mess. Yeah, but that's what uh, we were talking earlier about, you know, the, the kids that, you know, that volunteer here. They're really learning real life lessons. They are. Because sometimes you have to change on a dime of what you're doing because yeah. we've got six feet of snow or we've got sick pups or, you yeah. know. Yeah. Other people are out sick that, you know, that's going to carry over. Well, I insist, I insist that they, be, they don't come here for parties. I, I lectured the, a lot of my kids the other day about this. You know, you come here, you work. And some people are just, uh, some, some kids are just, can't, they can't handle it. You know? And sometimes I don't get to say, would you please do this, that, 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 you know? Move it! <laughs> you know, somebody's going to fall over it. Huh? <laughs> I will say, I think we all remember fondly the first time Carlene spoke a little loud to us. <laughs> spoke firmly. I could tell you the exact first time <laughs> and what she said. Oh, I don't want to hear about it. And I remember it fondly. <laughs> With great affection, I remember it. Oh, oh dear. But the funny, the second funniest thing she said to me was, and I was, I was puppies, it was when we had the Chuppies and the Muppies together, and I was with them all, and she said, are you on this list? And I'm thinking, I don't know what list she's talking about, and I'm thinking, oh, it worked, and you get nervous about what list you're on. And I'm like, I don't know. And it was the list for a dog. Uh -oh. And they were reviewing, and I'm like, oh my God, I got around okay. <laughs> that you're volunteering. <laughs> Line up, one jumped right in there, the other. <laughs> but you're dying. 
dominant one has to go in last. Because if the dominant one goes in, the other two jump in at it. <coughs> you got that? Yeah. Because it's sort of aggressive thing to do, to jump towards Ah. Uh. So you put the dominant one in the back, so that everybody else gets on, and he jumps in your side. So him in first, and he can't get the rest of mine. So. That's just one of those little nummies that people don't understand. It's almost that way with loading horses, two horses on a trailer. If one kicks the other, you know, out in the field, right. you don't want to put the kicker on first because the other one's not going to walk up the rear end of it. No. The not mod, but the next largest one of the lighter brown ones, that one seems, hasn't warmed up to me. Kind of just a little skittish around me. Seems, seems back. Something's happened to that one. Um, but I actually had all four of them, you know, with me this morning, and she kind of stayed back a little bit, and then when they were all in the barn, the same thing, she sort of stayed behind. Um, I did but like Buddy, I think, is starting to know who I am. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt he Good. was, he was sort of, like, responding to when I was calling him, and it could be all in my imagination that I want it to be that way. Um, but he, he would come right up to the fence. I'd like to, I'd like to have him in here for mail call. Well, especially with this blue stuff on the floor. They don't seem to like to have their picture taken very much. The donkey? Yeah, it's like pick up, pull up my phone, and they all would go. Okay, no. <laughs> 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 well, I took their picture and I sent it to a bunch of people today. I'm like, from me and mine to you and yours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, happy long weekend. That's how I'm looking at it. Christmas is Christmas, but it's a long weekend. And that's what I'm excited about. <laughs> And next week we get along with me too, so I'm very happy about that. And do you know that Lexi's going to Maine next year? Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Next year? Yeah. Starting when? Um, I don't know. Actually, I actually haven't gotten the acceptance letter yet, but uh -huh. like, the plan is to go there. Hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. good. We'll work there like crazy through Labor Day. <laughs> I don't know if they're on semester systems and start probably in August. Um, at least they don't know. Down, down south they do. School is weird now. Yeah. School is weird. I think they're finally figuring out that we don't have to have the children home to help harvest the food. So they begin to encroach on sort of both ends of June and August. There's yeah. really no reason to. Well, down south, ours, a lot of our schools start early to mid-August, and yeah. then they're out beginning of May. Yeah. Well, you've got a heat problem, more or less, though, right? Yeah, but schools have air conditioning. And honestly, it's hotter in August than it is in May or June, so yeah. it does, that kind of doesn't make sense. Yeah. I remember starting high school, starting school, I grew up in the Northeast, we always started right after Labor Day, yeah. and then we got out at the beginning of June. But, yeah, we have a heat issue, but August is way hotter than it is in June. So if they started in September, they would how do your, How do your kids get out of school bus, though? They have to wait out in the hot sun, right? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Oh, well, uh, not. I mean, morning isn't that hot, mm -hmm. so waiting in, in the afternoon, they're not waiting on the bus because they just jump right on the bus from school. So. That's true. Well, I'm ready to clear that up. Oh, With my high school, we started this year, we started the last week of August. And That's unheard of. And uh, since I'm a senior, I get out around May and graduate in June, but like the other, the uh, lower class, they um, get out in June. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Okay, what's going on? Why didn't she go back? Um, they're probably just chit chatting now. Hmm. But we did have the three pups out zooming around out here, okay. so they got some energy out. That's very good. Mm -hmm. They're getting very large. Mm -hmm. But we're right now not going to swap any dogs around until we get this diarrhea under control. But yeah, but everyone was saying today that all, they're really nice pups, all four litters. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of them and they really all are growing and yeah. Behaving for the most part, and you know, yes. 
city and such? She's learning about Thailand. What? Thailand. They still have Thailand. Hell yeah. We have Thailand. George did mention it. Because we did that last time, but we didn't do that this time. Yet. Well, let's go with the Thailand. Okay. You want to find it? Uh, it was we a white thing, wasn't it? It's a jar. Yeah. The next problem is going to be how are we going to get it in the dog? We not even. She used butter last time. We had all the, those little We cubes. have capsules. Did we, did we? I know that we cut all the cubes up and they had it all on those little pieces that we had. I don't know what she did. I thought it was a, I don't know. It's a powder, and it's a foul tasting powder. Oh, uh, I'll go, I'll go. I have, I have empty capsules someplace. Okay. <coughs> that we put together, and all that's an awful job. You can do it outside because even sitting there doing it at a desk is get it in your mouth. But you know what? I had a dog who was on Medicam. It's a liquid anti-inflammatory. That stuff smells like <laughs> rotten eggs, like no tomorrow. But he would just lap it up. It was, you, you know, you syringed it for however the weight was. They would tell you how many cc's to put in. He would lap that stuff up. And yeah. I'd be like, oh, trying to pull it out of the <laughs> yeah, jar. They think that stuff smells good. Oh, Rotten stuff. Horrible. Awful stuff. Yeah. Awful stuff. So I guess that's the dog report that people had asked for. If there's still some diarrhea going on. This is Thailand. T-Y-L-A-N. It's, it's for sale over the, I think it's over the counter type, I mean, it's, you, you can get it online. It, it started out being for turkeys. You put it in turkey's water. And then the pig people, I don't know how, discovered that it cured the pig scours, which are terrible. And then, oh, 10, 15 years ago, a great Dane person that I knew, an older person, said try Thailand and at that point it was purely for pigs but now I know that George has a bottle of it on his shelf and oh. <laughs> I went I, I, this is way back this is way back with the first I, the second dog I gave away to a person a handicapped person she came and, and filled those capsules and she had great long fingernails uh. and she sat there with this horrible face <laughs> I can still remember her so that was back in 19, no, 2004 that we found Thailand. And it, it, does, it does work very nicely sometimes. <coughs> and just to sort of paraphrase what you had said earlier for our, you know, this is public, is what you're so proud of is that the working dogs are, so, are happy dogs. They are happy. My dogs are happy. George is the happiest dog I know of. He really, he's having a good time. He's got a job. He stands up. He does his job. He's very happy with himself. When he walked out on that on that dance floor where he was, I mean, he couldn't ask for a better attitude. Sort of like, I'm here. Just worship me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's good. Yeah, he gets plenty he's of that. He's having a good time. I mean, look some of the some of the shots we've taken when, when he's off leash and they're playing or whatever. And he, he's followed her on a bicycle. Just yeah. Like, I want to just play on the beach. You know, he's, he's right with it. And that sled video when he's like running out the hood. That's, I think that's probably one of my favorite videos. <laughs> did you find any? I did. I found it. I left, but I left it in the kitchen. You want it? I want it. What, what, what are you going to do with it next? Well, I was going to see if Grace was going to want me to help her do something it's tonight. Well, well, let's, let's, let's figure out how we're going to do this next. Mm -hmm. do, do you just found the powder. Powder and your caplets. Oh, you found the caplets? Is yeah. That, they said loaded? Thailand empty caplets for Thailand. Okay, so now we've got to get the caplets, caplets full. Oh, that's okay. We can do that. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Ha ha. <laughs> we got those Is that the same amount? Ten. Surely we can do that, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 You're saying that it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's got a rotten taste. I and heard that was it terrible. I, I, I don't yeah. wear a mask. I'll wear whatever. Yeah. No, I think we'll be okay. 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 But, but did we, but we, I thought we gave it to him on butter last time. Probably put the capsule in the butter. That could do it. That would work. Okay. 
So the, just the, the trouble is, I think, I think you're trying for almost a quarter of a teaspoon, and I don't think you're getting a quarter of a teaspoon in between two pieces of butter. Oh, okay, got it. Without it falling all over the place. Okay, all right. Give you a hand. Oh, you to do the capsules. You go right ahead, guys. Probably outside. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you have to get a little piece of paper and roll it into a teeny tiny funnel. Sure. Ooh, that would help. Well, go ahead. Smart ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get out there and help. I used to have to weigh teeny tiny little pieces of stuff for my first job. Well, you go make your little funnel out there. They're big capsules. So thank you all for spending this non-mail call mail call with us. And uh, we'll see you again. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, are we all?